What's going on, guys? Welcome to Beastly Thoughts Show Live, episode 82. Can you believe it's been 82 episodes of this? We are old. Yeah. No, you're old. I'm young <laughs> no, no you are old, Mario <laughs> Rabbit. Don't even start with that. <laughs> you are old. I am a young spring chicken. We got yes, Not yeah. Too Nerdy on tonight. Long time no see. We're super happy to see him again. How you doing? What's up? Not much. How, how, what have you been up to? What have you been playing lately? What have you been uh, doing? Metal Gear Solid, man. man that, that game is pretty much taking up my life. i got to play more on a PS4, though. I've been playing on a PC, and it, you know a game's good when you're playing it on a PC, and then you're starting over and doing it on a PS4, and you're going back and forth, playing it all over again? Like, like that's when you know the game is that good when you're doing that. So I'm just shocked because, it, like, the first hour of the game was back and forth between cutscenes, like always, and the gameplay, but, like, it's such... Like, so much action in there that, like, you don't even care for parts of it that you're not playing because you can't even tell, like, when it jumps from you not playing to you playing again. And they're like, oh, man, I'm supposed to play here. And, like, it's, it's really exciting when it's a game's like that. So it's pretty cool. Now, I, I got a question for you, Not Too Nerdy. You, I, I know that for you, Metal Gear Solid for PlayStation 1 is one of your favorite games of all time. Mm -hmm. how, does this, how does this compare? To, uh, like, it's nostalgic because it does, like, it, it throws back certain things that you remember from it, but uh, it, it's completely different. Like, you you pretty much see how much it evolved, like, how, like, the game is, is changed, but yet it kept to its roots. You can still do the, the stealth, but now you could, uh, since it's open world, you could choose the way you do it. You choose the way you play. And I think that's, that's something the game was missing before. Like, that's something that, like, you always wanted to do it your way. But like before, you're it's linear. You're forced to do it a certain way, and okay. I, I think that's what really changes game. Okay, and, and one more question about it because I'm a big Metal Gear fan myself. Uh, Metal Gear Solid Two, um, I'm pretty sure Briar would agree, was the Metal Gear that kind of jumped the shark. The story became confusing and convoluted. Uh, is that start of the Patriots? I don't even get it. <laughs> 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 um, what? I mean, as far as the way that they presented the story, is it as confusing? Is it something more cohesive and easily digestible now? Would you say that they kind of got it right compared to the way that the old stories were being told? I think still, yeah, I'm too far. I'm way too much in the beginning of the game to, like, understand everything. But, like, certain things already I know, it's like, oh, man, like, that makes sense now. Like, things that I missed in the, in the you know, before, like you're saying, in those games. And, like, certain things are making sense now. But yet, there's still like a big chunk missing, and you're like trying to figure out what's going on. And I think, you know, hopefully, I want to see at the end of this, like they start answering even more questions. So, like, I really think it's too early for me to answer that because this game, I think, is what 40 plus hours. People said if you really, you know, I heard 100. I heard it was 100 hours. How many I, hours in are you? I think like in the main story. I'm only like for the PC. I'm in. I'm like 10 hours into the PC. And the PlayStation, I'm literally only like two or three hours into it. Okay, so, gotcha. um, but yeah, like I, I think that uh, that's the main, the main missions that if you complete that, that's like 40 plus hours. But like, of course, with the side missions, all the other stuff like that, that will definitely be I can see over 100 hours, like people said. So, okay, gotcha. it's a huge game, definitely is. It, yeah, it's a game worth the money. So it actually, it's worth money minus the micro microtransactions. But I mean. That's something that's like not really gonna affect the game that much, in my opinion. But if you want to go spend money on that, go ahead. I'm not. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> well, actually, uh, two of the co-hosts here, Briar and Robbie, aren't interested in the game. Briar's not into Metal Gear in general. Robbie didn't want to support the game because of the whole Konami situation. But I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna buy it. So two of us are in. Two of us are out of here. So okay, uh, <laughs> it, it is what it is. So. We're really happy to have you back, Hector, um, and we look forward to the next time you're back with us, man, because now it's a, it's a fucking family again. All right, so, Robbie, you want to continue? What have you been playing this week? This week, I have been playing pretty much nothing but Destiny, because obviously the 2.0 update just came out. Huge, like, refinement to the leveling system. I'm so happy that the light levels aren't necessarily gone. They're now your overall stat, your overall defense level from the armor you have. I love it's XP-based. I love the quest lines and the systems. There's brand new bounties. Crucible has been a ton of fun. Playing all the new maps has been awesome. There's brand new modes like Rift, which is very similar to Capture the Flag with a new spin on it. I've been loving Destiny this week. It has been, like, all it's been playing, and obviously I'm super hyped about Taken King. I am so... So excited right now. 
I have a question real quick. So uh, you've been playing Destiny for a while. Like, I, you know, started, picked up Destiny a little bit. I don't know if you guys remember a while ago, my, you know, characters got a race, minus one. Yeah. They got dropped down to uh, 27. I was able to get a Titan back up to 26. And I got, um, I'm trying to see, the Warlock, I believe, is at 28. How long do you think, if I start doing with the new update, how long do you think it'll take me to actually get back? To like to get to like level thirty two, I guess is is it level thirty four now? Thirty two, so the yes, well, current uh, level is thirty four. Uh, okay. th- starting on Tuesday, the the cap will be forty, but it's not going to okay. take long at all because they've changed it. Remember how you basically hit level twenty and then you had to find legendary gear yeah. that was good enough to kind of keep leveling you up further than That's that. Gone. They've gotten rid of that, so it's now not- it's just pure experience to get you up to level forty, and then there'll be this other stat which is light level. That that's where your gear is going to start. You know, it's it's going to feel more like a traditional RPG in that way. Is that you'll just use experience to get up to level forty, and then your your gear is going to get you more powerful. You know, it's going to be so, that. Yeah. Let, stuff. Let, let me let me say this, Hector. It took me forever to get to level thirty three, and I honestly didn't know what I needed to do to get to level thirty four because for me, Destiny kind of got confusing. Uh, ascending weapons and gear and all this stuff. I just never had the opportunity to do it. Didn't play the game enough to really know my way around that stuff. But after the 2.0 update, I played for two hours and I was 34. It's so, fast, so. definitely. It's very yeah, fast, was... and I just, I'm just i so happy they did that. That was my biggest complaint with original Destiny. That's why I got burnt out on the games at the time, because things like that just frustrated me, and there's just a lot of things that Destiny has had that Bungie's had to address and fix, and they've just listened to the community, and they fixed so much, especially the Taken game. This is the biggest overhaul yet, and I absolutely love everything they've done so far. Well, I really I think we're going to talk a lot about Destiny today because it's all over the news, but I want to hear what Beastly's been playing before uh, we really dive deep into Destiny. Yeah, okay, but definitely. I was playing this week. I did some uh, Halo Master Chief Collection because I only played it once. Nice. I it, yeah, I bought it when I got my Xbox One. It came with it. And when I first bought my Xbox One, the game didn't work. So it was really pointless for me to try to play it. Pretty much. Yeah, and so I, I did a little Xbox One gaming today with some, well, this week, with some Xbox fans and friends that I had. I played some Titanfall on Xbox One. I played Ori in the Blind Forest. I played a couple hours worth of Halo Master Chief Collection, which works fine. Uh, I also played Destiny. I, for the last two days, we've been playing Destiny. I uh, really enjoy Rift. That's probably my favorite uh, crucible mode now. It's It really feels traditional. I'm really happy with what they did with that game as far as the changes, the new visual aesthetic, the way the maps and everything look. And uh, there's something else. Oh, The Last of Us. But moving on. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch Bomb City. <laughs> yeah, very much. yeah, I actually played The Last of Us with some uh, Twitch streamers, some fairly well-known girls and guys out there uh, who I follow on Twitch and who, who happen to know who I am. We kind of got together and did... Uh, a new series I'm starting is called uh, Twitch Team Ups, and uh, cool. so I, I played with a, a well-known streamer named Orange Beanie, a young lady who's really funny and really enjoys The Last of Us and other games, Destiny as well, Minecraft, and we we spent the whole day playing, and I got some other uh, Twitch streamers lined up for the next next episodes in the series. So it's been a really nice week in gaming for me. Nice, sounds good. I'm gonna watch that video when it comes out. Thanks. It's already out. Okay, I'm gonna watch that video. Sometimes within the next 48 hours. All right. No, 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 no. <laughs> Put a time stamp on it. <laughs> I'm going to watch it right now. <laughs> no, 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 I've clearly been playing Destiny. We're going to talk a lot about Destiny. Uh, I did want to talk about Rift. I'm loving the Rift game mode. It's a, I think it's really smart how in Update 2.0, they gave everybody Update 2.0. Everybody who's got Destiny has Update 2.0. And with Update 2.0, you got all of the new maps, eight brand new multiplayer maps you get to play just because you own Destiny. You only get to play them for a week unless you buy the Taken King. But these maps, i got to say, are pretty freaking awesome, man. It's yeah. like yes. They feel They're completely good. different than what I'm used to in Destiny. There's much more verticality. You're jumping all over the place. You know, it, it just... I think they've embraced the... You know, every world... Or every, every Guardian has at least a double jump, right? It's some sort of double jump. But in vanilla Destiny, all the... All the maps felt flat, right? They just yeah. you're you didn't really feel like they'd embraced the movement of Destiny. But in these new eight maps, you definitely feel like they have. They're 
you know, you're jumping up to second floor windows, you're coming down, you're killing people. Uh, I'm really enjoying the new maps. I think it's brilliant that they gave them to everybody for free to check out for, you know, a week. Unfortunately, when the Taken King comes out, you're going to have to buy the Taken King to get them. Once again, separating the community, but oh well. Well, Destiny does a smart thing is that every time they release a D- DLC, a the previous DLC maps go Become go free. free. Right? Do they? So oh, I didn't know that. When the House of Wolves came out, all the Dark Below maps got released to everybody. And, and so, now with the Taken King, all the House of Wolves maps are also free for everybody. Oh, that's so awesome. They essentially only have two segments. They have people who have the Taken King and people who have every other every map they've ever made. Yeah. Okay. Smart. That's actually not so bad. No, I, I, I think smart about that. Yeah. They're, they're smart in general. It's kind of like a, a really knowledgeable drug dealer. It's like they give you just a little <laughs> bit and let you try it for free. What? And if you really like it, you're going to come back and buy the product. And yeah. So they're giving people a week to play all these new maps, which i got to agree with you, Briar. Really awesome new maps. I loved it too. The vertical. I was like, what the hell are they doing? Learn from Treyarch here with these level designs. Yeah, uh, Memento, especially that map is crazy vertical and it's really narrow. It's very right. cool though. I like it. So they're giving everybody a taste, and if you like it, you're gonna pay for it, just like a knowledgeable drug dealer. So yeah. I have a question for you guys, real quick. Uh, do you think someone like me, it's worth it to buy the new release that comes out with everything included, or should I just get the DLC version? What do you think, Brian? So it's forty dollars to get just the Taken King, or it's sixty dollars to get Vanilla Destiny, The Dark Below, House of Wolves, and and the Taken King. One hell of a deal. So I mean, if you didn't buy The Dark Below and House of Wolves, I don't know that you'd get it if you just bought The Taken King. But at the same time, it's also old content. Content that will help me level up, though, right? Not really, because you're already going to be able to level up to 40. Then you can just run, you know, you can run current content. You know, you'll run through the story mode. They're going to give you some armor. You can run, uh, you know, patrols and stuff for, like, the different vendors to get some legendary armor. And then once you get into the current raid, you know, that's where you really start getting the good stuff, you know? Oh, I can't wait. That raid is going to be fucking crazy, man. Yeah, we're doing a, we're doing a live stream of the raid for Planet Destiny. We're going to try for the world's first. Race. Holy shit! I yeah. can't wait to watch that. That's oh, gonna I'm be gonna awesome. Be watching that, man. You know yeah. I'm gonna be trolling you in the chat, Briar. It'll be a good time. Oh I won't be God. reading the chat. I'm gonna be concentrating <laughs> on kicking ass and taking <laughs> pain. <laughs> so so are we, you, are I you figure guys... we ought to be able to kick it in about half hour, forty five minutes. Well, fuck. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> definitely not. So, do you, do you guys are, are you guys seriously considering the time it'll take to do that? You guys putting aside eight to ten hours to, to try to do this? Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's going to be awesome, crazy. man. Crazy. Well, I'm oh. going to be watching that all day. All day. Yeah, I can't wait. That's going to be crazy to see, man. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. So that'll be on Planet Destiny's Twitch pa- channel, but it should be a lot of fun. Actually, I got a meeting after the show about that. All nice. right. So let's also talk about the... Because uh, one of the biggest things with 2.0, other than the leveling system being changed and being able to play all the new maps, is obviously the weapon balancing nearly... Every weapon class in Destiny has been changed. There have been some huge overhauls. Briar, what do you think of the uh, balancing so far at 2.0? I think they nailed it with one exception. I think overall the game, PvP just feels more fun because there's more choices. They didn't go far enough with the shotguns. The shotguns still feel overpowered. They still feel from the too range far away. Still very far, yeah. Yeah, but aside from that one complaint, I think they really killed it. Auto rifles are fun to use again. Uh, pulse rifles, still very powerful. Probably the most powerful primary in the game right now. Yeah. But they don't feel like the hand cannons did a week ago, right? They don't feel Nothing. like Thorn or the Last Word did a, a week ago. Yeah. Um, you know, everything just feels right. Even hand cannons, it's not like Thorn is not usable anymore. You can still go in there and have it's a lot still of success. Very, it's still a very, very good, good weapon. Yeah. But it's not the overpowered fucking asshat gun it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's fun as hell. It's still it's still a good gun. Hawk Moon is still fun. You know, all the gun, all the weapon types seem viable now. Fusion rifles, Robbie. Did you try out the fusion rifle with the uh, the new gunsmith testing thing? I did try the test one. It was actually pretty good. I was surprised. It was. Yeah, the range on that thing yes. was insane. It's got brand new animations. The gun looks brand new. It's not just a reskin of an old fusion rifle, which we got kind of sick of seeing in Destiny. Sounds cool too. I love. Yeah, it sounds thing. cool. So, yeah, I mean, there's. I, I think they nailed it, except they need to push a little further uh, nerfing the range on shotguns. Or yeah, just take away those high-impact shotguns. 
Yeah, I gotta say with the balancing, I really couldn't be happier. The thing I'm the most thrilled about is everything feels balanced, and it, all these different weapons are being used now. Like you see auto rifles, scout rifles, pulse rifles, shotguns, yeah. fusion rifles. Everything is being used, which is awesome. I'm so happy to see variety like this in a game where there's so many unique weapons, especially with the exotics. Everything is unique among the exotics, and to see people using all these different guns and to all of them to be viable to one another. Obviously, some guns are still going to be a bit better than others, but in general, I feel so much more balanced. I'm so happy to see Thorn gone. Like, it's still a very good gun, but it's fair now. Yeah, I, I'm so happy with it. I have to it doesn't feel any more ridiculous than any of the other exotics now. That's, yes. the one, that's the gun that Kate was using all day yesterday. I still don't have one, damn it. Thorn is still awesome, but now it's not, like, head and shoulders above everything else. It's just kind of on the same line. Yeah. Mine a multi-tool. I'm loving that gun. You know, it's yes. like... Finally, scout rifles have an actual place in the game. Mida is using the hard light. The hard light got completely redesigned, and it's really cool now. Do you guys that have crazy light show too? Three, all three of your characters leveled up that high to 30, uh, 34? Yeah. I yeah. do. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually we got to discuss tonight about which characters are going where in the raid. Who's going to use which character? Yes. Yeah. Interesting definitely... fight. <laughs> yeah, strategies. Briar, what has been your favorite weapon now with the new 2.0 patch? What's your favorite weapon to use in Crucible? Mida, Mida multi-tool. Me Mida too. Hunter with maxed yeah. out, without maxed out speed. You just you're you're cruising around because the Mida gives you extra speed, right? It gives you just extra speed all around. Yeah. And then if you put if you put the uh, radiant dance machines on, it's like people can't hit you. You're just oh. like this. <laughs> you can't like. People have such a hard time hitting you that you just win gunfights. It doesn't matter what the skill level is. You just are harder to hit. Yeah, I know wow. you're I jumping around, player. or I use the bones of EO, where you can use uh, increased control and get extra an jump. jump. Yeah. Bah, 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 bah. You're jumping all over the place. But Mida <laughs> Multi-Tool, it's without a doubt my favorite. It's also really fun in Rift because you get that you get that spark and then you fucking just charge across the map and you're you're so fast that they can't react. You know, if they're yeah. behind you, they're never catching you. I definitely have to agree with you, Briar. I think Mida is one of my new favorite weapons now, too. It's so good in Crucible. It's awesome. Yeah. It's super accurate. It's got a very high damage. Another one that's been my favorite for a long time is Red Death. Red Death is an amazing gun, especially with that perk. I've also heard Bad Juju is incredible now, too. Yeah. Bad Juju. The, uh, the pulse rifles are still very good. Yeah, all the pulse rifles are awesome. I love Oversoul, too. Oversoul Edict has been something that's really good in Crucible. There's just so many... Top tier guns now. I feel like before there was your select few like Thorn, Last Word, and maybe Red Death, and now there's like all these guns that are viable on the same level, and I love yeah. to see that. Um, and next week we get a brand new meta because next week we start seeing the new Taken King guns. So like we got this one, one perfect week for the Crucible in year one, right, where everything feels pretty balanced. Next week, it all changes because we get all new weapons. There could be a new thorn yeah. <laughs> that breaks Spears' book completely. It could be the Ace of Spades. <laughs> uh, it could be. I mean, that gun does seem promising. Yeah. Uh, any more Destiny talk? Do you want to talk about Rift at all? I think we talked about Rift. We like it. It's fun. What about, Don't play it by uh, yourself. North? Get a team. What about Nolan North as the ghost? How do you feel about that? I'm not loving it. You don't think so? Mm, it's okay. It's... Uh... I guess I kind of get just got used to Peter Dinklage. That's what everybody's saying. Yeah. I just think it's funny in the name too. I mean, just saying Peter Dinklage the whole time sounds. <laughs> yeah, it's way more fun. <laughs> Dinklebot is way yeah. better than yeah. Little Dinklage. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You know, like I think his performance is better, but the tone of the voice just sounds weird, and it's jarring every time I hear it. Me too, because how many hundreds of hours have I heard Dinklebot speaking the same lines? Like, I have them memorized in my head, and then all of a sudden it's a different voice. It was really yeah. shocking at first, definitely. But I actually think Nolan North did a good job, and he sounds more, like, I guess, robotic. Like, more what I'd expect. And I think they're both great. Like, I like both versions. That's what I would say. Yeah. Have you done any of the new quests? Um, I've done some of the like older missions as well because for whatever reason they were brought back to the Taken King. There are some new rewards, so I went and through and did all of them. Yeah, I've done the new uh, subclass quests. I got the Titan one done with the Striker. I haven't finished the Defender. I got to do the other ones though too. Defenders. So the funny thing about doing these quests is that it's a weird week in Destiny. There's not a whole lot of content, right? They gave us they gave us all these new eight maps to play in uh, the Crucible. 
but there's not a whole lot of PVE content to play. We got a Nightfall, yeah. we got a Heroic, though, you know, the Strike playlists are all but gone. You yeah, know, they're pretty much gone for now. You can't really earn rep unless you can, but it's like most of us are trying to edge our, our rep up so that when the Taken King's up, we can just do one bounty, tick it over, and get a legendary package for it. So it's like, it's a weird week. There's not a whole lot to do. So I've been just doing those quest lines, and the Defender one was by far the easiest to do because it was the only time I didn't feel like I was competing for kills with the other two people in my in my strike. Because yeah. you have to, you know, you have to get, like, some of them are, like, you have to kill 50 enemies with uh, with your super during a strike, or you have to do, you have to generate, like, 25 orbs of light. light yeah. or, uh, but the Defender was, you know, you just have to... Uh, I think it was you just have to generate orbs of light, but you don't have to kill anything. You just pop that bubble and sh- shit shoots at you and generates orbs of light, and then all your buddies are happy too because they're getting <laughs> the orbs from that, so they can use the super to kill people. <laughs> Everybody wins. Yeah, the defender was super easy to do. The rest of them were kind of a pain in the neck because it feels like a race to kill people. Yeah. Beastly and uh, Nocturnity, have you guys played much Destiny this week? Not this uh, week. It was like two weeks ago for men. I, I I played I played uh, yesterday and the day before and um, yeah I did those quests as well I did the generate twenty five orbs of light kill fifty enemies with nova bombs all that stuff Kate and I ran through it of course there was one guy with us who had no fucking idea what we were doing he was like why why are you standing back here and of course I'd have my mic on and he wasn't talking to us but he wanted to continue on so he would just sit and sit down and watch us wait to generate orbs of light or watch us kill people with our super moves. And he was level 34. We were, like, doing a level 10 quest. So he, to him it was like seeing a Bigfoot in the wild. He was amazed. What the hell were we doing out there? <laughs> That's funny. You know? But, yeah, I played it. I'm, I'm really excited about the Taken King. Uh, that'll be probably the first game I get this month, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, and, and, yeah, I like the changes. I, I like the, the retooling. I like the balancing. Everything feels good to me so far. Of course, I'm not the man, as you guys are in Destiny. But uh, I, I like the changes I've seen so far. I'm looking forward to taking care. I, I love the UI changes. Like, being able to pull up your ghost and see what quest you're working on. Like, if that you're looking for so 50 nice. super kills, just being able to see how far you've gotten. If you're on patrol and, you're, you know, you have to kill 100 enemies on patrol, just being able to see how far you are by just, you know, instead of going into your mo- menu, you can just tap your ghost he brings up the ghost, and on the side, it just shows you your quest that you're working on. And you can Love track quests as well. Yeah, it's so handy. It's like these quality of life changes. There's so many small things, but yeah. they're all so nice. Like Burning it's awesome. your bounties without having to go back to the tower. <laughs> like, Love you know, it. These things are, these are nice changes. Yeah. And having new ghost shells, too, is awesome, even though that's another small thing. But that even um, attributes to your light level as well, and defense level, having ghosts. Yep. Yeah, I got a ton of ghost shells from playing the Crucible this week. Yeah, they've been dropping. There's been like a red one. There's been like a couple blue ones. There's been like a turquoise ghost. I've gotten yeah, some of them. Purple they look awesome. Spikes on it. I have that one too. That like one that looks one. awesome. That's my, that's my yes. new favorite. Yeah. So we and, got some uh, news this week. We want to go into the news. It is not very much, but you know, some of the stuff in here is interesting. Some of it not so much. I think this first story not so much, but Destiny lawsuit papers confirm the story of the game changed substantially through development. Um and. I think that's going to happen with any game through development. The story might change a, a bit, but they're saying substantially through this lawsuit, this information has been revealed that the game turned into something totally different through the development cycle. And of so course, we this will, is the Marty O'Donnell lawsuit. Yes. yes. Yeah. The so this lawsuit has been settled essentially. Yeah, I think it was. Course documents were released, and there's there was a ton of information that came out of this, and it'd only be interesting to people who are interested in the development of Destiny uh, and the delays and the story changes and why Marty O'Donnell... Because Marty O'Donnell's a fixture, or was a fixture at Bungie, right? He's the mm-hmm. guy who wrote the Halo theme song that's so yeah. famous. He did all the music for Destiny. Like it's, it's incredible that he would get let go. And to see him explain why he was let go and like the internal strife that was happening, yeah. I thought was really interesting. It was with Activision. It was conflicts and stuff like that. Right, and uh, then also he, in that, he also it also explains kind of why the main story guy, whose name escapes me right now, also left. It was for a similar reason. It was like the, the conflicts between the creatives that were working at Bungie and the higher-ups at Bungie and 
Exactly. Them making a deal with Activision, they just weren't happy with relinquishing so much control. Like uh, doing a trailer and not being able to use music they wrote, instead using like a Led Zeppelin song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That would piss me off too, to be honest. Yeah. So just... it, it's a pretty interesting... Uh, it's interesting if you're a nerd. And, like and we, we, we all are. <laughs> Like Development a, stuff like this, I think it's really interesting to read about, because we have yeah. another story here as well about um, more of how Destiny changed and how we know like there's been sort of a scheduling for when each Destiny game was supposed to release and all their um, expansions and stuff like that. Is I think it's really cool to read about all these uh, development changes and stuff. I think it's a fascinating story. Yeah. To me, uh, what exactly qualifies you as a nerd? I mean, we do have, you know, video game podcast right now. I'm just starting out there. Just I saying, think we're all nerds. <laughs> That's not <a> bad thing. <laughs> so. eh, nerds rule the world, baby. You make a strong point here. There's <laughs> <laughs> a question. Like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. The, the new age is the nerd age, man. That's what it is. I'm still a thug, man. I still hurt somebody, even though I got Mario on my shirt. Yeah, I was about to say, man. You can't be thug legs with Mario. <laughs> Super intimidating right now. Super intimidating. <laughs> 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 Shit, man. Is that a guy with Yoshi on his shirt? I'm crossing the street. Let's get out of here before we get in trouble. <laughs> you gotta great. watch out for that star, man. <laughs> Yeah, if that guy grabs a star, I'm in trouble. Watch out. <laughs> oh, that's so good. <laughs> I'm going to be thinking about that every time I'm out now with this fucking shirt on. I'll be looking at guys. Oh, my God. You got a problem, brother? You know? I'm scared oh, now. All right, guys. So the Destiny sequel was originally intended to release this month. And let me give you guys a little piece of information. It still is. It's called The Taken King. And it's releasing this Not month. quite. Not quite. So what was originally supposed to happen? This ties in with the last story of the story getting changed. So originally, Destiny 1 was supposed to be released September 2013. But due to these lawsuits with Mon Marty O'Donnell and the story changing, they had to delay the game a few times. I think the first time it was delayed to early 2014 and then originally September. That's why the game came out when it did. So Destiny 2 was originally supposed to come out after Destiny 1, and it was supposed to come out this month, September 2015. And then you see the scheduling of Destiny 3 was supposed to come out September 2017, and then September 2019 would be Destiny 4, and then a year after that, there would be a substantial expansion called Comet, which we now know to be the Taken King. So a lot of it has changed. What do you guys think of all this? Uh, it seems like it's just been condensed into this, this DLC formula. I think that's what it's going to be. I, I don't. I still don't know if, if if they'll ever release. In my mind, at least, there's going to be a Destiny two. There is yeah, definitely yeah. going to be. We one. know that it's been confirmed. There's going to be a three and four as well. And this also makes me think because I don't see why this would have changed. Because saying that Destiny two is still confirmed to come out two years after Destiny one, like they still have that plan, that would mean Destiny two is coming out next fall. It's coming yes. out September 2016. That's true. That's what the plan is. Th this is a this is a uh, misleading title for this for this story because it's saying that Destiny 2 was supposed to come out this this month, right? But the the real story, the the actual facts of the matter is that yeah, Destiny was supposed to get released a year earlier. So Destiny 2 it's supposed to be on a two year cycle where we're supposed to get a a new Destiny title every two years. So yeah, if they had stuck to the original release date for Destiny 1, then the plan was to have Destiny 2 come out now. But yes. It's like it's kind of misleading saying Destiny 2 was supposed to come out this month. Mm, that, gotcha. that implies that that's that's new, right? That mm -hmm. it was supposed to we're supposed to get like a yearly release for Destiny. That's what I was so thinking. It's a misleading title for the for the new story and yeah. It, it, the real story is that Destiny got delayed, and now in you know, it's like a domino effect. All the all the Destinies all are getting delayed. Get delayed. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised though if because we're getting obviously a massive expansion with the Taken King. That's kind of the building block in between this. I wouldn't be too surprised if Destiny Two did end up coming out September 2016 though, and yeah, then the the next plan. September we see. The Taken King for Destiny 2, whatever that's going to be. I think that's, they're definitely going to have a big yearly release, a game, an expansion, a game, an expansion. That's what they're going to keep doing. Hmm. That, that's the that's that's how 
Activision has outlined the plan for Destiny. Because they've they've all but said exactly what you just said is that we're going to see a yearly like numbered release and a buy. Or, I'm sorry, a bi yearly numbered release, and in the off years, we're going to get a major expansion. DLC, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, my question is this, and this is why I was always in, in the mind uh, set that Destiny 2 would be something hard for me to see coming. Is all this content that's available now and being released to the Taken King, all this is going to be just completely removed when you get Destiny 2? Will you be able to access these worlds anymore? Are we going to go to another place? Who knows? Yeah, like, is that even going to. All we know, like, Destiny 2 could literally be, like, a 40 or 50 gigabyte update, and it's on the same disc. Like, it could be something like that, even. I, mean, I doubt that, but... I think they want to... Because, keep in mind, remember in the beginning, when it first came out, everyone was saying, like, they made it for the older consoles as well. They didn't really optimize it and do things for the new console. I think that's something why people might look forward to Destiny 2, because then it should be made and created just for the consoles that are out right now. And it's not held back, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and it's not really held back, and I don't know, maybe at least for, uh, you know, P versus P, that it'll be 60 frames per second as opposed to 30. Like, at least the P versus P, not the when it's a P versus D, but at least P versus P. Like, if they, they made that 60 frames per second, that's something that will, you know, people will welcome open arms. I guarantee yeah. that they fix that little lag issue that's still there for P versus P. You know, like, that's one thing that you could do if you did wait a little while and they're just pretty much, hate to say it, milk out this version as much as they can until they get the other one perfected so they could bring out the next one. I mean, that's what I would look for. Go milk that cow. I mean, I'm just saying, that that's how you milk a cow? <laughs> I just pull the order. I was like, what did I just see right now? I just pour it out of the gallon container. <laughs> 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 oh, we can we censor that? Yes. Make sure you no. censor that. Whatever he just did. Judging <laughs> by the way Robbie's demonstrating it, I think I'd be pretty good at milking a cow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta make sure we censor that, please. Oh, Unless it's right on to the video. Like, <laughs> <laughs> All right, but back to Destiny quickly because we know of other content coming as well. Briar, I think you'll remember specifically that Destiny, we have another expansion coming after uh, Taken King. It's going to be more like Des or uh, Dark Below, Dark Below, and House of Wolves. Uh, Forge of Gods is coming out March 2016. Would that still be the plan? Because then we also have an expansion with the Vex as well coming maybe July, I think. The timing for those is highly suspect. Right, you're yeah. working off really old information that gave you the timing for that stuff, right? Council Wolves was originally supposed to be March, so yeah, yeah. Um, so like we don't know when that stuff's gonna come, and that timing seems better than this year. We got Zark Below in December, like right after the release of the game. It felt like almost too soon. It, yeah, and we had to wait forever for House of Wolves, and then House of Wolves. The gap between House of Wolves and Taken King doesn't feel that long. Unless you've been playing Crucible and getting your ass beat by Thorn constantly. Well, we won't talk about that right now, fucking Thorn. Come <laughs> back <laughs> You just started keeping on that as well. But yeah, I mean, we got... Yeah, no, that was, I was really happy to be doing that. I hope it gets started. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got two more DLCs coming, you know, for, between now and Destiny 2, so... Should be good. Should be good. Oh, what happened? Oh, lost. Uh, oh, no. no. He got too scared because I was milking the cow like this. He, he left. He has a co sensor. You can be milking all kinds of stuff like that, Robbie. All right, so we're going to continue with the news, guys. Um, Xbox One problems were predictable and preventable, according to former Microsoft executive. This is the always online DRM and all that stuff. This That's is what the it means. Main... Do you guys yeah, ever yeah. watch like a news story? Like happen, like when E3 was happening in 2014, and you're watching a company just make colossal fuck ups, right? Oh god! Yep. And you're thinking to yourself, "Why wow. run a fucking company?" <laughs> we all do, yes. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. Up that bag, like, way they smarter than these assholes. <laughs> what are they doing? Yeah, you know, they you know so what? Clueless back in 2013, they really did. They had no idea what they were doing. 
I, I think the problem was is that the management for the Xbox division was their Out primary me, interest um, was not gamers. It yeah. was trying to push this like connected living room idea. All in one entertainment system. That's what they had. And now they've yeah. completely changed that to it's more of a gaming console. Right. I, I think that it's Phil Spencer, right? He's the head. Yeah. yeah. Before right. it was he, Don he has done a wonderful job of turning that division around. I think he's gained... He's gained the, the respect, the respect of gamers. He's kind of yeah. like it, it's. You do not get the feel that people are so pissed off about Xbox. But I wonder if he had been running that from the beginning, or if, if they had initiatives that are more similar to what's going on now, what the current race between Xbox and PlayStation would be. Oh yeah, Xbox One would be such a different console because they'd have. Can you imagine what it would be like if they stuck with all that stuff? Like it was always online and. Well, if if you take into account so different take, today. If you take into account the resources that they put into the Xbox One to make it the all-in-one box, if they had toned some of that stuff back and focused on gaming hardware so they could go head-to-head more with Sony's PS4, the system, they would have been in a, in a much tighter and closer competition just based on that alone. I know you guys remember the way I used to be when I talked about the Xbox One back when the, the PS4 and Xbox One first dropped. I hated it. I talked shit about it on every show. And, and then when... Uh, Really, when Phil Spencer took over and he started to, you know, uh, do interviews and talk about what the, the new direction of the Xbox One was, and I started listening to this guy, and I, it resonated with me, but he was being real. You know, he told the truth. He said, we fucked up before. You know, Don Matrick, he's over at Zynga screwing them up now. I'm here. We're going to fix this. We're going to get get it back for gamers, and he did. He's making other companies sink, sink right now. He's just well, going to leave and go to the next well, one. He already got fired from Zynga, and uh, the actual CEO of the company stepped back in immediately and uh, just trying to get that company back on track. I hear he's working at a Dairy Queen up north somewhere. Oh, I love Dairy Queen. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I think they're going to go bankrupt right now. peanut butter, Reese's peanut butter cup, Frosty. Mm. No, no, you mean Blizzard. Frosty's at Wendy's. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Briar, I can't believe you would mistake those two. Yeah, hey, you know, fuck. I can only be an expert in one subject at a time. <laughs> it's like mistaking Windows and today, with it's milk and cows. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, look, Robbie, let me just say this to you, Robbie. If you ever find yourself in jail, never show anyone how to milk a cow. Okay? I won't. Thank you. Thank you. I won't do that. <laughs> Please don't. don't. Don't tell anyone the farm stories or what you used to do. You'll be a big <laughs> hit in no time. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> apparently the, <laughs> these Xbox Jesus. One problems were, were preventable and predictable. I wonder who would have predicted the Xbox One's initial launch plan was going to be a flop. I, I watched Sony and Microsoft back-to-back, and when Microsoft threw out the price and, and then they were talking about the always online, I was like, no. I kept saying it. I found myself saying it over and over again. I was like, why? No! They can't be serious. Yeah, is this a joke? HDMI input? What the fuck did they do that for? (laughs) I was really like, what the hell are they doing this for? And then when Sony came out, I felt like I watched the biggest moment in E3 history. And I'm sure that a lot of people in Microsoft's camp probably looked at that whole showing and said, we just fucked ourselves. I can't believe we just did this. I'm sure there was someone on the inside in a high position at Microsoft, at least in the Xbox division, who was telling Don Matrick, we don't need to do this. Yeah, we they were like, this. we gotta get this guy out we, of here. He's we, screwing our brand over. I hear they're hiring at fucking Zynga. Let's get... Uh, yeah. Microsoft, I think, overall, just had some dark years there. Like, it, and I feel like they're coming out of it right now. You know, like, Windows 10, I think, is an overwhelming success. I think the Xbox brand is coming out of the, the slum that they were entering. You know, don't forget, the Xbox 360 was a Wild success, but toward the end of the Xbox 360 tiers, Decline, they were yeah. making some huge decisions that were bad for gamers. They were getting rid of first-party studios. They were, you know, like games that were really successful. They just didn't didn't want to make. They didn't want to support developers anymore. They didn't want to have developers on the payroll anymore. This is not the Xbox 360. A lot of people have really fond memories of the Xbox 360, but toward the end of the Xbox 360's lifespan. You know, Microsoft was making some really bad decisions about how to how to treat fans of that brand, you know? And uh, I think it really showed up in that E3 co- press conference with uh, the Xbox One. Yeah. Mm. 
They've I think that was such a complete 180. Like it's a totally different system from what they originally. Uh, well, that's the problem. It's not a different system. It's they've got different plans for it, but unfortunately, it's a different vision of the old regime. Yeah, yeah, it's the same hardware, but they just changed their whole mindset around. Well, they had to, or they were going to drown in their own sorrow. They were drowning in a sea of tears at that point. It was a that was the pivotal make or break moment. And after E3. Uh, when the Xbox One was announced, they they knew they were broke. They were done. They had to do something immediately. I'm drowning so, in a sea of controllers with tiny thumbsticks and huge thumb butt or huge triggers. <laughs> Terrible controller. <laughs> hey, sorry, I, I left for a little while, guys. Some idiot unplugged the router. I don't know who who did that. So. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I just kicked up the router. I'm like. What just happened? Be <laughs> gone. You're, you're keep that size 15 away from that damn plug. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm still alive. Don't worry. I'm here. Uh, Good. We were we were worried. Well, we yeah. knew you'd be back. And and this is the last little bit of news. It's been kind of a slow week this week with news, guys. But uh, Fallout 4 will get regular free updates and DLC with the season pass. Kind of to be expected, but. Now that they've announced it, even before the game has come out, a lot of people are pretty negative about this, but I think the DLC for Bethesda's games has been amazing. Like, Fallout 3 with Mothership Zeta and Broken Steel, and, like, they had a lot of awesome stuff. And, like, with Oblivion, it was really good. Skyrim, they had awesome expansions. I totally trust Bethesda at this point. I really do. What's it called? What's it called again? Fallout 4? No, not Fallout 4. The, the what, what pass is it? It's a season pass. Oh, season, right? So that means there's more than one season. So that's what, like, I didn't know I heard a season. Like, they always they trick you like that. They're like, season pass, and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, that was season one. Here's the next season two. Hey, let, <laughs> let, let me just stop you right there, Hector, and let you know how fucking happy we are to have you back on the show. Just let you know. <laughs> happy to have you back on the show. That's how they trick you. Like, oh, everyone's like, I thought it was free. No, we, it was free. Everything in season, the first season. This is the next season. Now it's a separate season. They do that all the time. One season winter, one separate. season spring, one season summer. <laughs> you guys are just going to give them ideas. You guys are just going to give them ideas. They're just going to sell more DLC. I don't mean, care. They could charge me $100 for yeah. Fallout 4 and $100 for each DLC, and I'd still pay it, and I'd still look forward to paying it. Would it would still be worth it, to be honest. Cer- certain, developers, certain developers have this glow about them, and uh, Bethesda's definitely one of them. Uh, Naughty Dog is one of them. Rockstar is one of them. There's certain companies that make games that are on a completely different level than most other developers, and their DLC speaks for itself. Same thing with the The Witcher. You know, when The Witcher came out, all their DLC for that game was a lot of it was free, but uh, the stuff that's paid is awesome as well. The games are amazing, and uh, I'm telling you, just like you said, Briar, I don't care what they charge for Fallout 4. Every DLC, everything that comes out for that, I gotta buy it. But that's uh, they have they have a catalog of games that are all amazing, and. Uh, the name kind of speaks for itself. It's a Bethesda game. You gotta, you just gotta go with it. They have made some of the best video games probably ever made. Like in, especially some of the best open world games. I mean, they are Agreed. Just Agreed. amazing experiences. And it's like, it's, it's like if Coca Cola all of a sudden comes out with new Coke, you know it's gonna be fucking good. <laughs> you know it's guaranteed to be amazing. <laughs> so you've been enjoying Coca Cola for years. No, uh, it's gonna be great. Like, <laughs> like, like that Pepsi Blue shit. Oh, oh my god! Yeah. Or Crystal Pepsi? Yeah, Crystal Pepsi. Not before my time, but I know about that. It's yeah, terrible, so. man. That yeah. analogy, though, I just started thinking about all the non-successful cokes that came out since the original Coke flavor. I'm like, wait a second. I was, I was agreeing with you. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait. <laughs> Oh, man, that's great, though. Like, it's classic <laughs> knowledge right there. <laughs> I mean, one day uh, Bethesda's going to make some, a game that's not going to do well, but up until that point, you kind of got to go by what you know. You know? Did they make so, Knights of the Old Republic online? <laughs> no. Uh, no, they didn't. I thought that was... Um, that was Bioware. Bioware, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah they didn't make that. I mean, one day they're gonna they're gonna have a misstep, but until then I'm gonna just ride with what I know. And yeah. my first experience with Bethesda, believe it or not, I had um, Elder Scrolls Morrowind on the original Xbox, but at the time I didn't understand it. I was playing just regular Xbox games or regular PlayStation 2 games, um, and uh, I, I was like, oh, this is not for me. I don't know what the hell this is. It feels like some kind of new age PC shit. Let me leave this alone. And then when the Elder Scrolls Oblivion came out on PS3 which, of course, I didn't know at the time was better on Xbox 360, I bought the game, and I took it home just to look at it. I was like, this is amazing that they actually made this 
But again, the gameplay seemed kind of weird to me, and I forced myself to get into it, and I realized it was just that fourth wall I needed to break to understand what it was. And it really was a, a life-changing kind of game. Oh. To understand that they created I, I a no. real world, <laughs> and they created it as well. We had Robot Beastly in here. That's your guest. <laughs> oh, okay, Robot Beastly was here. Yeah. Bob, yeah, great. Right. You just missed yeah. it. Well, I just Regular updates. Said... DLC and a season pass. Fine, I'm okay with it. Give me Fallout 4. I can't wait to play this game. See, here's the thing. Like, the updates are going to be... There's going to be free updates. They're going to add new game features like they did in Skyrim, which are great. It's going to be great. But the thing is, a lot of the DLC, like, they make huge expansions Bethesda. Like, they're going to be worth the money. And they're going to... Like, if you want more Fallout 4, which it's probably going to be an incredible game, here you go. There's just more content. Like, there's nothing wrong with this. Question. I mean, I guess a season pass can be kind of iffy, but I think Bethesda's got a really good track record. Like, they're an awesome developer, and I'm I want to support them. What is everyone getting this for? Um, PS4? Xbox, Xbox One. One? Xbox One? Yeah, I am. Who else? Ryer, what are you getting it for? So I'm uh, currently researching a new PC. The PC, okay. Ooh, nice. I would too if I had a powerful enough one, but yeah. Xbox One does seem like the lead platform with the mods and stuff too, but it just seems like it's going to be the lead platform because they had it at E3, so at Microsoft's conference, so I'm just going to get it on there. I'm kind of curious how they're going to do that. The problem with playing a game on Xbox One right now is my entire friends list is basically on the PS4. Me too, yeah. But it's Fallout. Like, you can talk about it with everybody, but I'm not going to like talk to people while I'm playing it. I'm going to play it alone. I do that shit all the time. I, I, I just mute everybody when I get to the story parts. Yeah. <laughs> a game like that, I just want to experience with surround sound headphones on, just listening and experiencing the world. Like, a game like that, you want to experience that the best you can. This has got to be the the most hype for a game this year, right? It's Fallout 4? Oh, definitely, yeah. Like, I feel Mario Maker is pretty big, but I didn't even know it released. I was surprised. I knew it was coming out like any day. I didn't know what day, though. Yeah. I think Fallout, when they're right next to that, is Metal Gear Solid. That's why the, the reviews even show that. But like, it's like Fallout still is there because I think more people... All right, so Metal Gear Solid, either like it, you don't. There's, I mean, there's a huge following of that, but Metal Gear, like Fallout, some of the people have been waiting for also. So, like, that's why it's really Fallout, and then after that is Metal Gear Solid. I yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, those are definitely, like, the top two yeah. huge, like, triple A's. Like, the, they're the shit. People, I just, I've heard people talking about Game of the Year conversations for Metal Gear, but they never, they never end a sentence without mentioning Fallout 4. We still haven't seen what Fallout yeah, 4 is at, you know, like, yeah, it's a big game. Fall- I hope it lives it's up been a to big the year. Hype. I hope it lives up to the hype, Brian. Oh, Hopefully. me too. If it doesn't, I'm going to go to the Bethesda. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to fill a, a paper brown bag with poopies. <laughs> I'm going to light that shit on fire. I'm going to knock on the door and run away. <laughs> you heard it here first. I'm really pissed. <laughs> Keep that promise, bro. You should knock on the door first and then light on fire. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> While they're sitting there watching me. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> were you laying something on fire? Or were you milking a cow? I can't tell. Oh my god! Not a cow. It's similar. It's similar. <laughs> This thumb action. <laughs> See the difference? See the difference? There you go. Uh, Beasley's gone. He wanted he wanted to talk about uh, his kind of like special project. That's too bad. Hopefully he gets back on. I'm gonna send him another invite. You guys uh, vamp for a minute here. Oh. All right. Well. Killing so it. Killing it. It's good <laughs> to be back here. Everything's uh, pretty much the same. We got. Beastly still playing The Last of Us. We got Brian talking about Destiny. But what's not the same is Robbie. Can I remember there was a point in time where Robbie hated Destiny after he loved Destiny, then he hated it, and now he's back to loving it. Like back. This is this is like I never hated Destiny. I've always loved the game. I've just gotten burnt out on it because I feel like there's just not enough interesting stuff to do. I've always enjoyed the game. I think they call this a relapse. Okay, can we... <laughs> Robbie, you're lucky this is live because otherwise we'll edit, like, we'll edit it, jump in the clip of you saying that, you know what, I'm tired of Destiny. I can't wait to see you. I think I did say that. 
Thinking of that, actually, I went and watched a old uh, BC Thoughts episode. It was over a year ago, and I, Ryan, you specifically asked me. I don't know if you remember this, but this is an episode we had Fig Coenk on. You asked me if we'll be playing Destiny in September 2015, and I said absolutely not because I thought <laughs> Destiny would last. Well, I thought it would last like a couple months. You know, like it was a big game, but then we'd kind of be done with it, kind of like what you do with Fallout. Like once you've done the content and all the missions, you're done. But I was wrong. Because we're still playing this game like very actively, and it's been a year. So. Yeah, I every every time I turn off Titanfall, I start playing Destiny. <laughs> Question: Are you? How do you guys feel about the Star Wars game coming out? And I'll talk about with uh, EA. I mean, all right, let's let's not talk about day one. Okay, let's talk about. Okay. Second week. If like, it's not day week. one, then I'm very excited. Like, I might hype us through the roof, but if it's day one, I'm not excited. How about week three, day one, when it's actually finally working, hopefully? Um, mm-hmm. do, you think think, so. do you think it'll be Do you think it'll be a good game? Do you think, because the way it looks... It looks it good. Looks, it looks cool, you know? I think the multiplayer will definitely be incredible. Like, it looks like so much fun. I'm just worried about how long it's going to last because they don't have a campaign, and that doesn't necessarily mean doom and gloom, sort of like with Titanfall. If they have enough content there in the campaign that can keep people playing, there it'll no last. Yeah. Uh, multiplayer, sorry. Multiplayer. Yeah. Briar, poke it on me like that. Like, the thing is, like with that game, it looks pretty cool. I just don't trust you. <laughs> 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 Every time now, it's just gonna be like, Robbie, is this gonna right. be this? <laughs> All right, guys, we stalled long enough. Beastly's back. <laughs> Beastly's back. Yeah, I'm over here. Some idiot unplugged my modem. <laughs> Damn, who was that asshole? <laughs> All right, uh, well, he, hey, he he's up. Guys, <laughs> oh my god, he's screwing up again. Hey. No, I'm here. All right, Beastly, uh, you had you you wanted to talk about um, possibly getting some guests on, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I did. Well, can you guys uh, hear me? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. <laughs> what the hell is going on here? <laughs> Why the hell would you do that to me? Yeah, I, I wanted to talk about getting some guests on, guys. Um, at least getting some guest hosts on to possibly. Uh, Shine a little light on the show, uh, maybe some different personalities, some likable characters. So this is a PSA going out to everybody watching the show. If you happen to know someone in the world of YouTube, has maybe a channel, who's active in YouTube, plays video games, of course, uh, and it doesn't matter what genre of game they play, as long as they're a gamer and they have an opinion on gaming, we are actively searching for new guest host to come on the show and and spread a little bit of their joy. So if you guys know anybody who you think might be a good fit to come on one of these weeks and 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 chop it up with the guys, drop their name in the uh, I guess in the comment section below under this video and uh, let them know if you know them personally this might be a good show for them and hopefully we'll be able to get in contact with this person to see if they'd be a good fit as a guest on the show. So uh, quick note about this. We've tried this in the past. Actually, not too nerdy, you were one of the people that we just contacted. You're like, hey, we like your content. You want to be on the Beastly Thought Show. Uh, Robbie was a little bit different. He basically uh, stalked me for six months and uh, threatened my family. <laughs> That's exactly how it went. Perfect Damn right. Yes, exactly how that story went. I'm a no, since <laughs> no. But yeah, yeah it's, it's ridiculous. The funny thing about this is that... You'd think that people want to collaborate, right? Is you think that. And I think that most people do want to collaborate. But the funny thing is that it's hard to get in touch with other people who do this line of work, right? It's other people who do YouTube. Uh, they are incredibly hard to reach. So if you know somebody that you'd like to see come on the Beastly Thought Show, let them know. Let them know that we're looking for people. Yeah. And, and that's, this is guest hosts, nothing like permanent, but we'd love to have you on sometimes if you're a good host. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and, and back to the Robbie story. Robbie actually contacted, I was playing my PlayStation 4, and Robbie was in a lobby, and he said, hey, are you the BC Gamer from BC Thought Show? The. I said, yeah. Yeah, he said, you are? I said, yeah. He said, what does Briar Rabbit's lips taste like? I said, I don't know, man. I did not <laughs> say that. <laughs> Like butter, <laughs> strawberry, and cinnamon. I'll clear oh, that one up right now. 
Yeah, I thought you were trying to rhyme, Beasley. I thought I didn't know where to go. Robbie was in the lobby with the new <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. I, I am black. It comes right, next. Hey, I, I just found that out right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I try to adjust my color, but I realize. <laughs> yeah. This dude might actually be black, damn it. <laughs> yeah, but we, we definitely like to get some uh, some new talent in here, uh, showcase new personalities. I think it, I think that the Beastly Thought Show is good for everybody. Uh, everybody here has grown from the show. We've made lots and lots of new friends uh, because of this show. And uh, there are people out there in the world of YouTube who are, who are grinding every single day, every week, putting out videos who might have really good perspectives on the shit that we talk about here. And they might not have a way to you know convey that with other people. So if you guys know a person who you follow, who they have good content, they have a good personality. We, we want positive people here. Don't bring in The Undertaker and say, fuck you, fuck you, and fuck you. We don't need that. We need uh, positive attitudes and people who are willing to come in and have intelligent conversations about gaming. So if you know somebody, let's make a connection, baby. Drop their name below. Let them know that we're looking for guest hosts. We're looking for productive we people here, people somebody. who know how to milk a cow. All right. Yeah, show him, Robbie. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. I'm, 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 I'm done. Bye, guys. I'll see you next week. <laughs> All right, Beastly, what do you got going on next week? Uh, I'm going to be doing some Taken King next week, man. Nice. Uh, that's probably the game I'll be playing all week. I've already told a lot of my Last of Us buddies. Well, actually, a lot of them are going to be doing Taken King, too. So I'm going to be watching the live stream for Planet Destiny to see who, who the hell is able to, to beat this new Rain. I want to see if you guys can actually do it. Uh, and so I'll be watching that, then I'll be playing the game, and hopefully yeah, I'll be spending a lot of time doing like that. A lot today. You're trolling like a lot. <laughs> no, no, Robbie. We're not trolling. Robbie, You're Robbie. You're trolling me you know harder ever trolled me before today. Robbie, I'm just getting you back you to know the live they say. streams. Robbie comes into Look, the Planet Robbie. Destiny live streams and just busts on me for like a Hell two yeah. hours straight. <laughs> you know I'm joking. Yeah, I'm, not. Here, I'm joking with Robbie. you too. Not too nerdy? Yeah, what are you up to this week? I am going to continue playing Metal Gear Solid. Um, I'm going to get as many hours as I can, but I'm going to include, now that I have more time, I'm going to include Taken King. So we're going to see. Nice. So we're going to have to level up quickly, though, because uh, i, I got to get back to something. Hey, have mean, you got any Red Bull? Um, <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> right? I should. <laughs> oh, speaking of that, do you guys, have you guys gotten the codes for the uh, Red Bull quest? Yeah. No. Of course, okay. him. I got a code. Um, I managed to get one in a giveaway, but yeah, I think that's kind of frustrating too. How they're segmenting that quest off to people who uh, happen to buy like Red Bull and stuff. Some some that, people can't drink Red Bull. Some people are diabetics. Damn it! Some people can't take that extra energy. And like, that stuff a, races, it makes your heart race like crazy. It's actually kind of dangerous. You can get like a heart attack if you have heart issues. It's like I good guess. sex. You got to stay away from Red Bull, baby. <laughs> oh my God, that's. Look and at Briar. Briar is making love right now. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie, are you what are you guys, up to this week? Uh, I'm obviously going to be playing a ton of Taken King. I am so excited. Like It's just gotten to the point where I've been so back into Destiny. Like I do get burnt out from time to time, but I've always enjoyed the game a lot. Briar, stop it. Just hold on. Do it again. <laughs> this is doing the work. And, um, yeah, I can't wait to get back into it. Like, I'm just going to be playing it so much this week. Are you guys going to be playing Taken King when it is live? Because it's going to be live 5 a.m. in the morning for you guys. Yeah, 5 a.m. What time is that for you? 2 a.m. I'll yeah, be up playing. I'll take 5 a.m. any day of the week. Hell yeah. <laughs> Number two? Yeah. Yeah, playing the Destiny is going to be doing a live stream of the Taken King. I think we're playing it. I'm doing a 24-hour live stream, which is crazy. Maybe I can play with you guys. On Friday, we are going to try for a world's first of the King's Fall raid, oh uh, and we'll be live and streaming that, too. But. Yeah. That's cool. Now, the, the, the live stream of the raid starts when, again? Friday. What time? I don't know. Oh, I'm sure you'll let me know. I'm sure it'll be time. I don't I know if they've, have they said it. what time the raid comes out. I would think it would either be 2 a.m. at the reset or 10 a.m. is when they seem to add a lot of stuff. I have a feeling it's going to be 10 a.m. I hope okay. so. I really hope so. Oh, damn. <laughs> Over two? Definitely. Yeah. yeah. But I don't I don't think they've said what time the raid is going to release, but when the raid releases is basically when we'll go live. Yeah. Actually, no, for you guys it would be 1 p.m. in the afternoon if it was 10 a.m. here. That would be pretty nice. Over 5 a.m. I'll take that. Yeah. 
Yeah, me too. I can definitely wake up by 1 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> me too, sometimes. If I set an alarm. <laughs> All right, I think that's going to do it for this week's show, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next week. See you guys. Bye, guys. Thanks Bye. for watching. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>